This is a case study describing a dislocation of the bicep tendon as well as a full thickness tear of the subscapularis. We'll begin by describing the bony anatomical landmarks associated with the anterior shoulder. First we have the greater tuberosity located lateral to the bicipital groove. Next we have the lesser tuberosity located medial to the bicipital groove. And finally we have the bicipital groove itself which is a tract for the bicep tendon. And also a major bony landmark associated with the anterior shoulder, especially in dynamic studies, is the coracoid process. Also, we will be reviewing the anterior musculotendinous anatomy, beginning with the biceps tendon long head, which originates at the superior labrum and inserts at the distal elbow at the radial tuberosity. Next is the subscapularis tendon, which originates at the anterior scapula and inserts to the lesser tuberosity. Also originating from the anterior surface of the subscapularis is the transverse humeral ligament, which anchors the bicep tendon in place over the bicipital groove. Probe placement for the transverse bicep image begins over the bicipital groove between the greater and lesser tuberosities. Here we have the lesser tuberosity labeled as LT. The bicep tendon is colored blue and the transverse humeral ligament is yellow. A stable bicep groove will be lower than the greater and lesser tuberosities. Just distal to the bicep groove, it is not uncommon to see a small amount of normal physiologic fluid accumulating surrounding the bicep tendon. We now turn to the long axis of the bicep tendon, shown here at the level of the surgical neck of the humerus. Highlighted is the bicep tendon fibrillar pattern. When the probe is placed higher than the surgical neck, we approach the bicepital groove and proximal to the biceps groove, the articular hyaline cartilage, and the very proximal insertion to the superior labrum will not be seen due to its relationship beneath the acromion process. When pathology presents itself, it's very important to remember the bony surface anatomy associated with ultrasound. Here at the anterior humeral head, it's important to realize the green marked lesser tuberosity, the blue, which is the bicipital groove, and the white, which is the anterior humeral head. In this image we have a dislocated bicep tendon located over the anterior surface of the humeral head. We'll again highlight it in red corresponding with this axial T1 fat sat MRI. Highlighted in white are the anterior surface anatomy as seen on the left with ultrasound on the right with the MRI. It's also important to note that there's a normal lateral vessel to the bicep groove, but only one. In this case, we see multiple vessels formed throughout the bicipital groove, which is considered abnormal. In this case study, I would like you to recognize the transverse subscapularis anatomy primarily so that we can distinguish the dislocated bicep tendon from where a normally situated subscapularis tendon should be. The vertical hypoechoic lines are not tears, but musculotendinous slips. We will orient ourselves to the long axis of the biceps tendon. Here in this MRI correlation over the anterior humeral head, we have highlighted the bicep tendon, coursing over the humeral head where it should be in the normally situated bicep groove. Here in the yellow box would be our general field of view with the surface anatomy in white. Here we have the bicep tendon in the long axis where the transverse subscapularis tendon should be resting over the anterior humeral head. Long axis of the subscapularis tendon is generally found by locating the coracoid process shown here on the left and the anterior humeral head on the right. Externally rotate the arm revealing the lesser tuberosity becoming a very very lateral structure. Again when pathology presents itself we must rely heavily on our bony landmarks as the tendons may not be normally situated. Here we have an oblique bicep tendon on the left also the coracoid process Internal and external rotation of the humerus will show the anterior humeral head where we have our bicep tendon resting. Here we have the same patient approximately one year prior to the exam. Highlighted is the lesser tuberosity in the bicep groove. Also the transverse humeral ligament. As we scan distally we see the bicep tendon subluxing out of the groove. As we scan even more distally we see the bicep tendon not quite anchored as closely to the humerus as we would like to see it. 